Hi friends, Prepared Suburbanite here. You know, we've got uh, upcoming in about 14 months uh, what I would consider, and I've said this before, one of the most important elections we have ever been uh, facing. This time around, we're going to be looking at whoever the Republican nominee is, probably Donald J. Trump, and Joseph R. Biden being the uh, uh, leading Democrat candidate, at least at this point. So in November of 2024, that's 14 short months from now, we will be casting our vote for the future of this country. I've got some uh, thoughts about our current president that I want to share with you right after the intro. For those of us that are old enough to remember the old game show <laughs> called To Tell the Truth, um, back in the day when uh, uh, we were watching black and white TVs and uh, all that, but I can certainly remember watching the uh, To Tell the Truth show. The moderator or the host was a fella named Bud Collier, and uh, what would happen is that the contestants would come out pretending to be somebody other than who they were with the exception of one who was the real person and they would all uh, give their name and say what was uh, uh, what, what their name was and move on to the next one and on to the next one and then the panelists and the game show would ask questions and things like that and try to determine who was real and who was fake. So today's version of To Tell the Truth is coming up in just a second. My name is Robin Ware. My name is Robert L. Peters. My name is J.R.B. Ware. Will the real Joseph R. Biden please stand up? I believe that our current president um, is um, out to outgunning to ruin these United States. He uh, he just slapped everybody that was told never forget about 9/11. He just slapped all of us in the face because he is not going to present himself to any of the solemn remembrance ceremonies uh, here in the, on the East Coast. So we've got Shanksville, Pennsylvania, we've got the World Trade Center, and we've got the Pentagon. And he is not going to be there. He is uh, returning from his vacation and uh, will be stopping uh, in Alaska on the way on September 11th. So just up yours, Joe. We were told never forget, and now you're making it a deliberate ploy to forget. The other thing that uh, uh, came up in the last few days or so about Joe was the amount of money that he has uh, currently allocated to go to relief efforts in Maui. As you all remember, there was uh, devastating wildfires in Maui that the liberals all blamed on climate change only to find out that it was uh, the dereliction of duty of the uh, folks that are in charge of that island, which are probably all um, Democrats. And they um, did some really dumb, dumb things. But the amount of money $700 per affected family. $700 is what he is uh, um, ready to uh, spend uh, in his own gracious self. What that turns out to be is one-tenth of one percent of the amount of money he wants to send to Ukraine. 
If that isn't a slap in the face to the American residents that live or used to live on Maui, who are still trying to figure out where the unknown three or four hundred uh, missing persons are right now, the death toll, uh, it's been very quiet, and I don't think we're ever going to find out exactly uh, what, what has happened there. School was not in session. Parents were working, so the children were at home when the fire broke out, and um, there, there's stories of folks being uh, families found burned alive in their cars trying to escape the Holocaust there. Um, yeah, no comment, Joe. Thanks an awful lot. And while he was there, he did stop and um, uh, tour the devastation on the island. And all he could uh, relate to was a, a very minor kitchen fire that he had uh, at some point in the past in, uh, uh, in Delaware. And he's trying to equate that horrible thing where he almost lost his cat and he almost lost his Corvette to a um, fire that was described as minimal damage, uh, trying to equate that to the, to the total devastation that uh, is going on um, currently in Maui. The guy is absolutely worthless. He has no kindness. He has nothing positive going for him. And if uh, you're still one of the um, 80 million people that voted yes for Joe Biden last time around, and you're still planning on voting for Joe Biden the next time around, listen to some of the things that um, are being talked about with respect to how he has improved through Bidenomics our daily life here in the United States. So, uh, the Media Research Center, MRC, um, recently, uh, today I think, published, or maybe last night, published uh, the five um, flow charts or the five charts that um, the Biden administration doesn't want the American people to see. And uh, I'll put a link to that um, article in the uh, comments uh, below so that you can all see it. But Here's uh, some of the wonderful impacts of Bidenomics, that gas prices are up 53% under the Biden administration. Real wages, um, which is the median weekly earnings, in uh, quarter one of 2021, so that's when Biden took office, the real wages, wages were $373 a week. In quarter two of 2023, which just ended in June, is uh, $365 a week. That's uh, $8 less per week on our real wage index. That's not an improvement, according to MRC. Prices, and we're talking uh, the impact of inflation here. Um, under Donald Trump's administration, the four years, that uh, the 48 months that he was in office, the prices increased over four years, a grand total of 7.6%. Now, if you divide that by four, which is four years, you get just under 2% inflation, which is the target rate. I think it's still a little high, but it's the target rate that the Fed has said is healthy in a, in a healthy growing economy. Quarter two, 2023, Oh, after 31 months now, yeah, sorry, after 31 months, the prices have increased under the Biden administration 15.9%. 
Well done, Joe. Yeah, we're uh, getting ahead. So real wages are going down. Prices are going up. That's um, Bidenomics for you. Mortgage rates. Under Trump, mortgage rates went down 32%. Under Biden, our mortgage rates have gone up 156%. That's uh, frightening, and uh, the impact that that's having on uh, the housing market, on the automobile sales industry, um, is devastating. People can't sell their houses. People can't afford the uh, um, uh, the mortgage rates that are out there right now. Um, you can't even afford to, to start if you're a youngster and you're just trying to get started. <laughs> um, so that's... Uh, Mortgage rates are doing really good under Bidenomics. Personal savings rates, the, so the saving rate index. Under the uh, Trump administration, the savings rate went up 86%. Under the Biden administration, it's gone down 74%. Coupled with um, Joe Biden's relentless pursuit of destroying our constitutional rights, those that are enshrined in the Bill of Rights, um, what, what he's doing to um, um, infringe on the Second Amendment, what he's doing to um, our privacy concerns, uh, with the First Amendment kinds of things, with, with censorship and uh, free speech. Um, there are emails out there right now that are showing that um, the Biden administration did in fact collaborate with social media platforms to reduce and um, cancel certain words, certain phrases that were against the narrative. This guy is the worst excuse of a president I think I have ever, ever seen or heard of. And if we don't get rid of him in the next cycle, we can kiss this great country of ours goodbye. This is the Prepared Suburbanite reminding you to get ready and be prepared for what's coming. I'll see you all on the next video.